Good morning, everybody. Uh, let's get this party started, or well, let's say party that was yesterday. Um, it is absolutely great to see so many of you sort of alive, some more than others. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us at today's session, uh, Hot, Hot, or Hyper, or otherwise known as uh, How to Handle Big Data. And before we kick things off, it's always good to sort of tell you what today's session will be about. Um, hopefully, you've seen this slide before, hopefully when you made the decision to come to today's session. Uh, but we really want to talk to you about sort of the demystification of big data, but also how you can handle that. Because big data is, of course, a lot of data, but we still want to get insight out of it. So today's focus will be all about how we can make that big data work for us and start visualizing that. Now, one of the biggest tools that we have in the toolkit here at Tableau is Hyper. So we are going to talk about Hyper and how we can leverage Hyper at the right times to really get the most out of that big data lake for us. And today's session has been listed as an advanced session, meaning that we do understand or assume some working knowledge of Tableau and some of the features that we're going to be showing you today. But we're really going to be focused on how and when you can use those to really get the most out of them at a particular time. A few household remarks. Um, all sessions this year at TC are recorded. So take all the notes you want, take pictures of the screens if you want, but also know that you can watch it back. You'll have the slides and PDFs available to you a few days after conference. So also feel free to sit back and just watch today's session. Um, we do have a bit of content to go through, so we do ask you to hold questions until the end, but it's then our promise that we'll make sure that there is some time for those questions to be asked. And on a personal note, I already want to apologize for excessive sniffling on my part. <laughs> This is presentation number five. The AC is killing me, but we'll do our best to soldier through it. Um, so th <laughs> apologies for that as of now already. Pity points right away. <laughs> yeah, it's easy, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, we just once again want to welcome you then to Hot, Hot or Hyper, uh, how to handle big data, or actually how to handle big data and how Hyper is going to help us do so. Great. Let's start with... A quick introduction from our side. So today you have the pleasure to experience the whole European big data expertise here on the stage with a Dutchman on my left, and I'm I'm from Germany. <laughs> Seventy years on, the Dutch and the, the, the Germans finally get along. Yes. <laughs> uh, my grandpa loves me for that question, for that joke. <laughs> he just he loves it anyway. Well, <laughs> We, we rest the, still for this session. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was the only reason why they paired us up. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I'm, I'm Marius. I'm a, a solutions consultant uh, based out of London. And before I um, started working with Tableau, I was actually working for uh, the biggest energy provider in, in Germany with over 20 million customers. And when I was working there, the big topic was smart home and smart meters. So when you look at on that scale, the data is getting pretty large pretty quickly. And that's when they built me up and uh, I got training in, in big data systems. That's how I got introduced into to the big data world. And now at Tableau, I help customers to, yeah, to make the most out of their big data and to architect um, the, the whole um, deployment and environment and how, how Tableau fits in, in there. With me, Erwin, the big Dutchman. <laughs> <laughs> the big guy, yeah. Uh, my name is Erwin Vallaar. I am the team lead for our quite incredible product consultants in our London office, taking care of our Benelux, Nordics, Middle Eastern, and Africa region. Uh, my background is not in tech or IT or in energy. It's actually in healthcare. Studied public health management. Was a public health manager for a few years. Um, wasn't until I actually started working with Tableau until I started unlocking a whole bunch of... Um, of um, of value in my, in, my, in my data, and that actually made me decide to just move to London and work for Tableau. Now, even though I did work for Holland's largest occupational health service, that data wasn't big yet. Um, we thought so it was, but uh, start working at Tableau, you see a lot different, of course. Um, and Mario is actually my conduit into the world of, uh, of big data. So it's really um, glad to be here together, and hopefully you'll see some of the, the, the light bulbs that I had working with this guy. <laughs> Great, so let's start talking about big data. What, what is it anyway? So in the last, let's say, around 20 years or so, the requirements in terms of storing data and uh, data analytics uh, changed quite, quite drastically, I would say. And we, we, we see that or group that in three major, um, major areas. One is the, the data volume. The data volume, everyone is, I think, talking about this in our keynote uh, yesterday. The data volume is just exploding. 
but not just that, the velocity in terms of how the data is uh, ingested into, into systems is rapidly increasing as well, and the variety. We want to analyze different kinds of data, different shapes of data, um, unstructured data, right? But at the end, I think big data is just really data that is a bit uncomfortable to handle it for, for us personally at the end, right? So it means different things for, uh, for different uh, people, and um, especially when you talk to analysts or um, BI admins, IT, they all have a different idea of, of big data, right? And uh, today our goal is to, to show you and to guide you through the, um, the big data world and how you can leverage the, the secret weapons that Tableau can give you to, yeah, to work your way around it and get the most out of big data. And what we've seen is that we just have so many different and new data sources where we want to leverage the data from and ingest the data and uh, enrich the data from. And um, the first companies that really had to deal with this, I would say, are the, the big, tech big tech companies like Facebook or, or Netflix and Google, right? They had to deal with humongous amounts of data of all s uh, shapes and sizes. And out of those um, think tanks, there are really smart people coming up with really, really great systems that we classify as big data these days, right? And um, a, a big key term that is um, coined here is the data lake that kind of um, bring, brings those technologies all together under, under one term. Um, just meaning really that we store any data we have in, in some kind of relatively cheap and redundant storage solution that we can then leverage and tap into. And that's what we want to do today as well with, um, with Tableau, obviously. We want to tap into that data lake, um, wherever the data sits, whatever shape the data might be in, and leverage it. Build analytics on top of it, build dashboards that the, the business can use at the end. And it can be quite, quite daunting, right, to, be, to have that data lake, to have the data um, all around the place, different shapes, different volumes. It's quite daunting um, and quite challenging to make, um, yeah, um, exciting dashboards on top of that. But that's really the key that we want to focus on today as well. Um, the key should be really the, the people that we build the analytics and the dashboards for. That's in the core of Tableau's mission. Every, every feature, every new functionality um, that you've seen yesterday as well is, is built around that one, um, that one goal that we want to bring data, wherever it is, whatever shape it is, to the people that are then able to analyze the data and drive uh, insights from it. So that's the, the key today. And I want to show you an example of this, right? So we can, we can connect Tableau directly to a big data, big data leg solution. So let's go into, into Tableau Desktop and connect directly into, into Hadoop in this example. Hadoop is one of those big, big data systems. And it's just one of our, our connectors, right? So if you want to connect to Hadoop, one of the, the data lakes, we, just, we could just use something like wherever, uh, depending on the flavor of Hadoop that we're using, we just connect via um, Hive. Hive is a way that we can, where we can write SQL to the data that is stored in our data lake, right? So that's perfect. We just connect to Hive, and we get the tables that are exposed with, uh, through Hive, we can, so Tableau writes, writes SQL in the background, we have a visual interface, and we can start analyzing now. Great, right? We have the data um, on the, in, in desktop, and we, we, we see already the dimensions, the measures. Let's start, let's start analyzing. And then we see something like this. Right? I think the most, the most frustrating pop-up in, in Tableau desktop, it just loads the query, it's executing the query, and so it comes back with a result here, but it wouldn't be a very engaging, a lot of fun to, uh, to analyze and visually analyze the data now and explore the data. And that's exactly what we want to uh, have in Tableau, right? That's how, it is, how we make it fun to, to deal with data. And um, that's what we want to, want to try. So the, the query came back, but I think after two, three seconds, I lost already half the room. They were going through the pictures of uh, the party last night, right? We have really sh short attention spans when it comes to, 
to content in general and data as well. So we, that's what we have to bear in mind. We really have to design for the people in mind and to design dashboards that are engaging for, um, for our business, forever who we design data, data to. Right? Yeah. And it wasn't even big data, right? It was just 80,000 rows, so absolutely nothing. But there are ways, of course, in which we can make big data work for us. Now, by show of hands, who wants me to tell you this session only lasts four minutes, we plug it into Tableau, world's beautiful. <laughs> no one wants that? Great. <laughs> then I don't have to be that bearer of bad news that's going to tell you, well, that's not exactly the case. Uh, we can't just plug or use any connector at any time and things to just be beautiful. But it doesn't mean that we can't use the right ones at the right times to still get that result that we want. And that's the agenda for today. First, we're going to talk a little bit about Tableau's big data focus and the things that we've been releasing and the features and connections that we've already been building for years pr uh, previously. Now, a big focus on that, of course, has been Hyper. So we'll touch a little bit about Hyper is and why it can be very beneficial in building a big data strategy. The next step, or the bulk of the presentation, will actually be us presenting you with the big data framework, which you can hopefully leverage to start thinking of a big data strategy within your own organizations. Now, a key side note to that is that please don't look too much upon the technologies that we're particularly using in our demos, but really look at the technologies that you might have access to and how you can use those in the right way. Um, and we'll do, of course, all of that by using a practical example in which we do have some more data than 80,000 rows. Um, and at the end, of course, we're going to summarize and have some time for questions as well. So let's start talking about that big data focus that we have. So from, from our perspective at Tableau, we focus on three key areas to make the work and analysis of big data engaging and, and fun. So one, of course, is the connectivity. Very important, we need to be able to access the data wherever it might sit. Then we want to make that very performant to deal with so that, um, that we don't have an experience like I showed you uh, just now where we have to wait 10 seconds every time we do something in Tableau Desktop. So in order that we are able to find, find the right data, be able to explore and discover the data and find insights at the end. So that's our key focus and all our capabilities are built around that. And we're gonna show you some secret weapons today to achieve that. One of them is already the hybrid data strategy that Tableau allows you to, to leverage. So it's a combination of bringing data into memory or combining it with uh, live queries. So sending queries directly to your database technology. So if you have a super fast database, perfect. Just use that, direct, um, direct live queries, and you don't have to move the data anywhere. That's, that's probably ideal. And uh, in the Tableau user interface, you still have a unified user experience, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't look any different um, if you're connecting live or with an extract. Let's uh, double click into each of those though. So the live query engine supports the world's largest databases and it attaches directly into an enterprise data store. And the, the key bit here really is that it pushes down the, the workload to the, to the database, right? So who of you guys have seen the, the Mercedes standing in the, in the Mercedes Superdome last night? Who saw that one? Well, so, so most of you, right? So if you, if you have a car like this, you want to drive it, right? You want to take it for a spin um, without any, any speed limits, right? So for on the German Autobahn, for instance, right? You just want to give it, for, uh, give it a proper spin. Germans and you don't always want to, want to mention the Autobahn, don't they? <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah, because, because you, <laughs> you Dutch guys are always blocking it with your caravan. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> so that's, that's what the live query engine allows you, right? Um, you just leverage the technology that you have and that you invested in. So you really, you really leverage the investment that you have already done into your data systems, right? On the opposite side, you might have one of those Dutch camper vans, right? <laughs> which, have, which store a lot of data and uh, useful stuff, but uh, it's not the fastest thing in the world, right? So then you might still want to build engaging content on top of that data, which is fast on large data sets. So you bring that data into, into memory 
and uh, extract the data. And with uh, Tableau 10.5, this is, of course, Hyper, a database engine made in Germany. Amazing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Erwin, tell us more about that. Yeah, of course. I can talk about the German technology. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, Hyper is super excited, of course, that we finally have it in all of our products. And it replaces the traditional Tableau data extract that we used to have. And we'll actually see that Hyper is starting to power a whole bunch of stuff in our product suites, including things like Prep um, and Tableau Public. Now, of course, Hyper replaces the TDE, but it's essentially a technology that leverages um, modern hardware the best. We can just scale it up because the software is, allow is capable of making the most use out of modern technology infrastructures. The other part of it is, though, that we combine the functionalities of querying databases and extract creation making sure that we have a system that is in one, it's just one system and it's in one state, making sure that there's no trade-offs and no delays. And that's the case because we can scale Tableau to use whatever RAM and hardware it has to its advantage. It keeps sending jobs to whatever available hardware it has, making sure that we can leverage the, that hardware at the same time at the right time, making sure that whatever hardware we can give it, Hyper will just start leveraging it. The key benefits, of course, there being that our customers are seeing up to five times faster query performance with larger and more complex data sets than that they did with uh, the Tableau data extract. Even the creation of data extracts they can see is up to three times faster, meaning that you can actually have sometimes fresher data. You can schedule these refreshes to run more often because they're finishing up quicker. And it actually supports much larger extracts than the old Tableau data extract does. Hyper is truly optimized for hundreds of millions of rows of data. Sounds amazing, right? Beautiful. Sounds, sounds like the, um, the solution to everything. But I have to be a bit German here and uh, um, caveat this as well, right? So it's not the I win the big data game button straight away, right? So we still have to think about how to use it effectively and in the, in the best way. So I really want you to think about the your overall data strategy. Because Hyper, of course, when, when you use Hyper, you, you pull the data from wherever it, it came from, right? So that, and uh, data has some kind of um, yeah, gravity and, uh, and size to it as well, and weight to it. So you, if you pull it away, you always have some, some kind of um, yeah, lag there. And, uh, but of course, it's a great, great way to speed up data and if you combine it with the right strategy and combine it with other technologies that you, that you might have access to, com com um, looking at the actual use case you want to use the data for, that is ideal and that's what we would recommend. And that's what we see with our biggest customers as well. Netflix, Netflix is one example, right? So they have humongous amounts of data, right? So I, I think at least half the room is probably a Netflix customer and user and they track every little step if we are if we're binge watching the new Making a Murder, Murderer season or if we stopped halfway through, when do we stop? They, they track everything. And that is streamed in, in real time into their big data lake, which is on Amazon, on Amazon S3. And then they have two different ways to, to deal with that data, right? So they might decide to leave the data where it is in their big data lake and have some batch <coughs> processes running that is bringing the data into shape and brings back queries that they already know they, they're going to have, right? So how many users did they have today, this week, this month? Well, these are batch queries. Um, they just can run overnight, and when they have the answer um, in the morning, that should, that's absolutely fine. Or they decide they want to have engaging uh, content for their business, and they want to create that, that fast, uh, fast storage layer. Then they pull the data away into a technology that is made for this, right? There could be a Teradata, a Redshift, or, uh, or hyper, right? And then they use it for the right, um, and then the, they design it for the right use cases. Could be data exploration, data science, or uh, business intelligence. And what really helps about, uh, with thinking about that, that data strategy is something um, that is called the, the big data framework, the hot, warm, cold framework. And that's something we want to introduce you to um, you today. And um, in order to, to align your technologies, your use cases to, to the right uh, levels. 
So when we talk about cold, warm, hot, let's start at the bottom. We have the cold layer. This is your, your data lake, right? This is your data, whatever it is, whatever volume it is, whatever shapes it comes in, and it, it, it sits there. It's, it's not, uh, think about Netflix, it's the, the streamed data in the data lake. Um, it's, it won't be the most responsive data set, but it, it stores very valuable data. When we find that data, we might decide to bring that up further into a warm layer, which is uh, usually a bit, bit smaller in size. So when, when we work our way up, the, the data set's going to get smaller and more aggregated, but faster as well. Um, with then at the end leading up to the hot layer where we have a blazing fast query sent back to, to something like, like hyper or an analytical database. So if we align technologies to, to the cold, uh, cold warm hot framework, we see co um, Hadoop on the, on the cold layer. It's creeping more and more into the warm layer, so there are great technologies increasing the query performance on, on top of Hadoop. Warm is uh, traditionally a, like a relational database, and then we have hot, the analytical databases, and uh, hyper at the top there, of course. So that is quite a uh, conceptual way of thinking about it. How do we expose the right level of detail and the right level of granularity to our business and stacking that up in hot, warm, cold? How do we then translate that to a process that we can actually start aligning our data source and our technologies in? So let's start off with the first layer, which is cold, which is, as Mario's already said, it's the focus of big data, right? What's the big, what's the data lake? It's storage. It's just blob storage sitting there. That's just what it is. And the next layer will be that we want to analyze it. Look at the color coding, right? That's where your warm layer sits. That's where your relational databases sit. So we can get the right information and start doing some, um, some, some, some analysis on that. At some point, we want to speed that up as well, making sure that they are responsive and fast in the way that we can then make sure that it brings to the consumer. So if we think about it in that way, we use that framework to move from that big data lake which is sitting there with all our information just storing away. We use that hybrid data strategy that Tableau has with those live queries in which Tableau writes those queries in whatever connector you're using, in whatever language, because that's, of course, the technology that, 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 that Tableau has. Every time we drag and drop in a live connection, we write a query in the underlying database language, or we leverage Hyper, in which we put it in an extract and really optimize for that performance. But we use both at the right time in our analysis and speeding it up, and then we use Tableau to bring that to our consumers. Now, I don't know about you guys, I love the keynote and devs on stage because we announced a lot, but you're in luck, there's one more announcement. Tableau is taken to the air, and we are going to start an airline. We're not, but we said that we're gonna use a practical use case, right? So we've brought some data along. It's all the data from the FAA, uh, the Federal Airline Association, um, and they have uh, data on all flights that have happened in the US since 1990. It's quite a, it's quite a few flights. Um, and they have information around, did the flight happen or was it canceled? What was the original scheduled uh, 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 departure time? What was the actual departure time? Scheduled arrival, uh, actual arrival, all those sorts of things. So let, let our use case be, what if we are a company, we're a new, of course, data-driven, technology-driven airline, um, and we have hundreds of millions of flights in their performance. Let's see if we can expose all those rows, about 180 million rows, um, to analyze that data and identify gaps where we could potentially get um, some, some market uh, footprint. Monitor the flight performance going forward, seeing where we could potentially make a difference, and expose that information to dashboards that can be consumed by all. Exactly. We really want to find out where the the roots are where we can get into with Air Tableau, right? Yeah. Where we can bring, bring more value so um, to, to make a better, better service and provide a better service on the, those routes if possible. And a great way to start is analyzing that data. So let's start with the, the cold storage, right? Similar with the architecture we showed you before, the data firstly is going to be stored in our big data lake, right? So the data comes from the FAA in monthly CSV chunks. And that's all it is really. That's all the big data lake is. We, we store that data somewhere cheap. In this case, we want to um, have that infrastructure in the cloud, so we chose S3 for our data storage, right? So that's where the, the data sits at the moment. 
now as Erwin um, talked you through the, the, um, the pipeline here, we have uh, the data here in our storage uh, layer, but we have the, the analysts and the data scientists maybe on the, on the other side, right? We need to give them access now to that data. And how, how do we do that? So as I, as I mentioned, so the, the data is sitting in our data lake. It's simply in those CSV files as we got the data, it's stored in S3. It's uh, redundant and uh, very easy to, to um, use from there and modify and transform from there. And I showed you Hive earlier. Hive lets us now create a table based on the, the data we have, based on the data we have in those CSV files, and lets us and Tableau talk SQL, SQL language to that data and lets us analyze the data, which works works really well if we don't need it to be very, very uh, interactively or interactive or fast. So we've, we've seen that this didn't really work out at the beginning of this, this talk to use Hive here. So I would recommend using um, different technologies and already move it up and start analyzing it and to bring it into that warm layer. Um, one, one thing to mention here, what is really important as well, is how you store the data. CSV is not a great file format to, to analyze data. So something like Parquet, for instance, that's a columnar store file format, um, already improves the performance and impacts the performance later on when, whenever we query that, when we query the files directly, right? All right, so I would say we move the data straight into our warm layer. We want to analyze the, the data interactively. And a way to do this without touching the data, without moving the data from one storage solution to another, is changing how we query this. So companies like, like Facebook, they came up with very smart frameworks and uh, connectors like Presto, for instance, that just query the data in a different way. They don't use um, MapReduce, what Hive is using in the back end. Um, it has a smarter, more efficient way to query the data and then bring results back. Other examples would be Impala, if you use the Cloudera flavor of Hadoop. Um, that is very similarly very fast. Um, Spark is another option, right? Just to, to mention some, some options here. And how they would look like from a Tableau perspective, I want to show you now again in, in Tableau Desktop. All right, so we are back in Desktop. We're working with the same data set that I showed you earlier. And you see already we have a couple of different connections open in this workbook. So it's the same data set, same location, same, same system, but now we just use a different way to connect um, to that data. So one way, for instance, is Impala, what I mentioned, right? That's a fast way, a faster framework to query the data in, in Hadoop. Let's go into, into that connector quickly. And as you can see is, so we, we're connecting to the, the same system and it's just changing the option how we query that data. We're just changing the option to, uh, from Hive to Impala to leverage the, the Impala framework to query the data. So let's go back to our sheet. Let's bring in the number of records and you see, boom, it's instant, right? It's very interactive. This is the live connection right now, right? We're really leveraging the technology that we have and to, to interact with that data. The thing is, so we, we work here with um, 85,000 rows roughly, right? And usually when we talk about big data, we talk about 100 millions, even billions of rows. So still that is not the, the, the one solution, that one answer. I just want to show you another way to do this would be something like, like Presto. So this is something, a, um, a framework that Facebook developed and that's, an, that's a, its own, own native connector within Tableau, right? So if you want to connect to data, you search for Presto and then you can leverage the, the connector here if you have that available to you, right? And here again, just to show you a little um, comparison here and benchmark, 
okay, it asked me for my credentials, so that slows it down a little bit. <laughs> Let's try this with another field, just to show you that I'm not making these things up. And again, right, so this is uh, uh, analyzing um, baseball data, and we are analyzing over 400, uh, 4 million uh, games here, for instance. And the, the query response was very fast again, right? Great. And um, which is actually quite interesting to know is, so our data is in S3. So we can leverage something that uh, connected that Amazon um, supplies, which is the Athena connector. The Athena connector actually uses Presto in the back, in the back end, so it works very similarly, similar queries, or pretty, pretty much the same queries. So this is something I chose for our airline now, and to query the, the airline data, right? So this is what we have here, and I brought this data into Parquet format as well to increase the the, the query performance even further. So let's let it warm up a little bit. Of course, this is a, like quite risky because these connections are all, all live connections to the, to the actual systems. All right, and then we can start um, analyzing that data. So we're dealing here with nearly 170 million rows, and we can start analyzing the data now, drilling, um, drilling up per, on a yearly level maybe, right? Look at the flights on a yearly level. And so we have a flag in here that tells us if a flight was canceled or not. We can look at the, the trends over time in terms of cancellations, right? And as you can see, so it's a lot of data. It's not as responsive as we um, saw with the, with the smaller data set, but it's still pretty good, I would say. We can still use this to explore the data but it might not be the right solution for a business dashboard where we need the sub-second response queries. So let's jump back to, to the slides. So just by, just by changing the way how we query the data, we didn't move the data yet at all. We created a very responsive um, in an interactive experience for an analyst or an, a data scientist, right? By using connectors like Athena, Presto, um, rather than, or Impala, um, for a matter of fact, right? So that's what I want to make clear. If we have those technologies on our fingertips, perfect, we can just leverage that straight away with the live queries in Tableau. It doesn't mean that nobody is, or, or that it, this might not be the right solution for business dashboards and our business end users. But if my data scientists could actually already be very happy, always keep in mind that sort of the slide that Mario showed in the beginning, that the business user and the type of user you're trying to cater to can define performance very quickly. Whereas a business user might zone out after two seconds, a data scientist might happily wait two hours for a model to run, right? So that's always um, good to keep in mind as well. Um, but an analyst is equally happy to be able to drill into this level because, of course, there's a lot more detail, there's a lot more granularity because he can actually connect to all the data. But if you want to start bringing it up to the entire use case and the entire business, we have to speed it up even more. Exactly. So now we, now we move the data. Now we bring the, the data either into a, different, into a different system or a different shape. And you really create that, that fast and hot layer then on top of the, the warm uh, layer. So what uh, technologies that you can leverage here are things like Redshift. At scale is a technology that lets you query the, the data or creates cubes on top of um, the data in, in Hadoop. So that's very powerful as well. Um, but uh, there are so many different ones um, that are working in that space. And I can really encourage you to, to explore what is the best fit for you. And even here in our data village, we have loads of those partners here, and uh, they are happy to, to talk you through the different, um, different approaches, right? But one of them as well, so uh, we have Tableau um, on our, at our fingertips, so we can leverage Hyper, of course. We can use Hyper to bring in the data into memory and create that hot layer and that speed sped up layer as well for our, with the end goal again, to create some engaging content for our business users um, at the end. 
So this brings us to, to the secret weapons that we can leverage with Tableau. The first two are aggregated extracts. That really helps us to create that, that hot layer, that aggregated layer that is then super fast for our business dashboards um, for the, if we need that quick sub-second response time. Another one is, is our new data integration, data cleansing um, tool, Tableau Prep. Prep comes with big data connectors as well and lets you bring, with even more flexibility, to bring the data into the right, um, into the right aggreg aggregation and granularity level to, to make that performant then. So if we just double click in both of those now, um, with aggregated extracts, you can pre-aggregate the data um, after you connect it to it um, live. So you can choose, you can roll up the, the data on a yearly level, quarterly level, monthly level, for instance, and you can filter it. So you only focus on the data that you really need for your analysis or for your dashboard. So that's really powerful and has a great, has a great advantages with um, having the same results on an aggregated level and a vastly improved performance. So it's amazing. And with prep, we can create those different slices with even more flexibility, right? We connect to our big data, we enrich the data even further, bring more data into the mix, and then we can decide how we want to use that data. We can aggregate that data further up, and um, I would say I'm just gonna show you this now live on, on my laptop here. So the first secret weapon was the aggregated extract, right? So we have the, the flights data here, we're looking at the last three years of data, and we, we are looking at the flight performance per carrier. So the, the size of the bar is the, the number of flights, and then the, the color indicates the percentage of cancellations, okay? So we can see we don't have the full, um, full data set for 2018 yet, but that's fine. We have the full uh, set for 2016 and 17, and we can see Southwest Airlines is, um, is definitely the one operating the most flights. And the, the cancellation um, looks fine as well. The, the percentage of cancellations looks, looks decent as well. Not as good as Delta Airlines or in 2016. So we can see that uh, visually now. Um, JetBlue, for instance, they, they seem to struggle a bit in the last year with a cancellation of uh, nearly 3%. Anyone, anyone flew with JetBlue to, to New Orleans? One? <laughs> was, it, was it delayed or all good? All good, all right, cool. <laughs> so they are improving now. They, lo they looked at this data as well, amazing. <laughs> and um, so this is still the, the live connection to our Athena right now. But let's say we want, this is the level of aggregation that we want to provide to our users. Then we don't need every single flight in our data set. So we can go ahead and say, we want, to, we want to extract that data now. So you go to the data source, you extract the data, and this is where Tableau will then pull the data into Hyper. This is how you then leverage Hyper from 10.5 and onwards. And the really cool thing is, it lets you filter on exactly the data that you, that you need. So let's say if we only need the last three years, um, we can add this as a filter here. Or if we need it on an on aggregation level, like the, on a yearly level, we can roll up the data on this level. So the, the data will be aggregated, and we decrease the size of rows dramatically. Dramatically, sorry. Um, similarly, when we have a date field in here, we can roll it up per quarter, per month, per day, just depending on what, what we really need. And another, another trick as well is if you have um, a very wide data set with a lot of fields that you don't need, you can say I want to hide all the unused fields that are not used in my current, um, current workbook. And then we just hit extract and it pulls the data into an extract, into Hyper. And then we can leverage from it from there further. Amazing, so that's one option. If you want to have even more flexibility um, I would recommend going into PrEP. PrEP is using Hyper as well. 
in the back end. And as you can see here, we are connecting to our raw flights data set as well. We join further data to this, so I want to have the, the airline name maybe as a, as a description, as a string field in here as well. That's what I joined to this data set, and I can really explore the data. I can see exactly what happens with, 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 my, with my join, right? And it still works on a big data, big data scale. So if you're working on, let's say, over 100,000 um, of rows, then PrEP will decide to, to sample the data at some point. But you can still work on those very large data sets. And you can still do um, what PrEP is great at. You can get an overview of the whole data. You can spot data quality issues straight away. We can even answer questions um, straight away. Similar, um, for example, which is the what we've seen before as well, which is the, the carrier with the most flights in this data set here. So it will be US Airlines. And we can always see the, the underlying data as well, so the row level detail. And we see where, where whatever we select is reflected in other fields in our data set. Pretty cool, right? And then from there, we can decide to bring it into an aggregation step. So we might want to create our hot hot layer now with, with PrEP. So that uh, PrEP lets you decide on what kind of dimensions you want to roll up your data as well and aggregate and group by your data. So that's what we have here. And then, of course, you need to find you the right measures as well that you want to analyze. So that could be my cancellations here. So I want to know for my, in my hot layer how many cancellations did a particular uh, carrier um, have per, per year, for instance. That's my hot layer that we're going to use later on for our dashboards. And we can, we can decide what kind of measures we want. So maybe you want to have the, the, type, the, type of, um, the type of delay as well, like the weather delay. We could bring that in as well to analyze um, which of the delays were due to weather. Right? So we decide that. And then we can clean that up even further, join even more data to it if we want to and then output this directly into Hyper. Right, we can publish this now into our Tableau server, for instance, or Tableau Online, or write this into a file um, in a Hyper extract. If you're not on Hyper yet, you can choose as well uh, um, the old Tableau data extract uh, technology here uh, down below. Make sense, yeah? That's how you can, that's how you can um, create the, that hot layer, that super fast layer with Tableau. And now Erwin will introduce you a, a concept, how to think about um, that data and how to, how to think how, to, how the best design would look like for a hot data set. Yeah, because so far that talk has been quite technical. Um, and Marius has been introducing these concepts of aggregations. But we, don't, we also want the granularity of that data, right? We want to look at that particular route in a particular year or even on a particular day. We still want that granularity. Now, what's important, of course, is people. And it's one of the first slides that we showed. And that's where aggregations actually do come into play. And it's what we call the human scale of data. People are not capable, or some people are, but most people are not, to process all the information at once at all time. Look, for instance, at how we all consume if you still consume newspapers. Could also be your BBC News app, right? You get the app or you get your paper and you go to the sports section. Then you go to the sport that you like and then you go to a particular game that you were interested in. Or if we stay with hospitality, you make decisions. You don't look at all the vacations and holidays that are available to you. You're going to say, well, do I want a ski trip or a summer holiday? A uh, summer holiday. Do I want to go to Mexico or Florida? Florida, great. So it's going to be Sarasota or Orlando. Okay, which hotels do I have available to me? And that's how people interact with data. And by using that hot warm layer, we can start leveraging that. So the lowest level would be the lowest choice that we have, that full raw data, and potentially that day information. On top of that, we put that warm layer, allowing people to ask questions, maybe on the weekly or the monthly level. And then we put that super fast responsive layer on top of that with potentially my quarterly or yearly aggregations, allowing my end users to start drilling down and asking questions of that data, drilling down from years into quarters, into months, into weeks, and into days really guiding themselves through your data. And at some point, us as DBAs or 
data stewards or analysts are going to allow them to interact with these data sources every step that they take. And they jump potentially into these other levels or these other technologies. Because this is where we're going to be thinking about how are we going to have people consume this information. Because we have all these technologies lined up and we have our cold, warm and hot layers. But how is that analyst going to connect to it to make sure that we can report on it and pre create these dashboards? Sorry, I'll bring it back real quickly for you. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, and that's where two other secret weapons within Tableau come into play. And there are the cross data source actions and actually the fact that we have a hybrid data strategy. Cross data source actions, for anyone here not familiar with actions, they are that filtering mechanism on the dashboard, right? But we can set those across multiple data sources because Tableau is that query engine. And because we have that hybrid data strategy, we can do that across uh, extracts, the live connections, back to extracts, or whatever way we want to expose that to them. Because we want to make sure that people can ask those questions, as we saw before, but maybe the Holiday Inn in Orlando wasn't that good, so I'm also going to look at some other hotels, or maybe jump back to Sarasota, or maybe I am going to go to New York, or go parasailing, or going to go on a diving trip. And that's the interaction that we need to expose to our end people, or to our end users. And that's secret weapon number three, those cross data source actions. So let's have a look at that and we, in action. And we got, the, we got the question last time. Hey, guys, when did you introduce cross data source actions into Tableau? I don't even know. We have, a, have that in the product since, since ages. But I think it's such a, such a, like one of the most unused features, which is incredibly powerful, as you're going to see now um, in, this, in this example. So this is a dashboard that's leveraging all my information. I'm looking at 167 million flights. Over 3 million of those were canceled, which is about 1.8%. And I'm going to allow people to interact with them. So when I'm hovering over these data sources, we can see all my values changing, right? So American Airlines in 1999 had about 0.03 million flights canceled, which is about 4%, which is higher. And all these values are quite responsive. Now, before I start making selections, let me just show you this dashboard in general. So there's a hot dashboard that is going to show me the proportion of cancellations per operator and by year, because Marius has already created that for me in Hyper, using Tableau Prep. We have a warm layer that's going to give me the performance by route, and then going to give me the top 10 underperforming routes. And I have a cold layer that will eventually give me the daily information. Now, if we go to the data source, we can see that there's three data sources in this dashboard. I have a hot layer, which is my hyper extract. I have a warm layer, which is a live connection to a PostgreSQL. And I have a cold layer, which is that raw information sitting in Parquet files on S3, also connecting live to it. Now, the trick on the dashboard itself is, is that we're going to start leveraging these dashboard actions, and most importantly, those cross data source actions. So if we're looking at one of these actions, we can see that I'm going from my hot layer to my warm layer. And we'll actually zoom in here a little bit. So I'm going from my hot to my warm layer. And I'm going to tell Tableau which fields are the same within the source and my target data source. Most importantly, actually, is the fact that we do this exclude all values, meaning that we tell Tableau to only populate those lower level of granularity worksheets the moment my end user makes the selection. Because we already know that if we're going to populate that cold layer, it's just going to run forever. I only want to show that information. We've already made a few selections and potentially filtered out 99.5% of that information. So before I do that, let me just switch on Tableau's performance recording, because we are going to show what we're actually doing. And I can make my selections. I can select Delta Airlines in 1998. The request will run. We had those prompt results from that hyper extract, but I now get all these results straight from my PostgreSQL, doing it on a per route. And I can look at, well, Delta, we know their home airport is Atlanta, but these routes are really not doing well. Uh, Washington, New York, and I can make some other selections here as well. So maybe I want to look at US Airways in 1996, and there's a few routes that are really unperforming. Or I might have another one. I see Chicago to Philadelphia is not doing well. And the moment I select that, 
we can see the Tableau starts drilling down, starts calling upon those Parquet files, sitting in my S3 bucket on Amazon, and there is my daily information about cancellation scores per day per that particular route. And we can see that particularly, for instance, in April, there's a few days where we had 70% of cancellations on a few days. And in October, we saw a few. And I'm pretty colorblind, so this is quite difficult for me. <laughs> um, but I also had a few cancellations here in December. Now, when I stop Tableau's performance recorder, we can see why these cross data source actions. And actually, the fact that we have that hybrid data strategy is what makes it so incredibly powerful to leverage Tableau, to leverage these technologies at the right time. So we're just building that performance recorder. I made a few selections. And we can now see that we have a few queries executing, where the longest was only eight seconds. And that's the one going into my source sheet cold. So I can see that Tableau has written to me that query in that S3 file on my Parquet files. Or I have my um, data source into my warm. And I can see that Tableau has written for me the queries going straight into the Postgres SQL. But we have an experience for end users that allow them to interact with the view going up and down into level of granularity, whereas we, as builders of that dashboard or as database administrators or as data stewards, allow them that interactivity, but still have it be prompt. This was, for me, at least personally, like it clicked for me why, uh, why this is so cool to work with. Um, in the interest of time, we only have a few minutes left. Um, we have a few closing statements, but it might be good to see if there's any questions at this point. Yep. Yes. So just to repeat it for everyone in the room, what if you had CSV and not Parquet? And then your second question was? And what if you put all those 180 million rows into Hyper? As Marius already said, Parquet is better than CSV. It doesn't mean that CSV is necessarily bad, but the performance is going to be worse. For this particular case, I would say. <laughs> For this case, Hyper might be actually the right solution. As we already said, it's optimized for hundreds of millions of rows. So load that for Hyper? Um, yeah. But actually, as Marius already showed in prep, those three layers that he had in his prep flow were the hot, warm, cold. Nothing is stopping you from creating three hots or two warms or one hot and one cold. It's all use case dependent, right? What do How I want the end user to, to do? couple of minutes maybe so I mean hyper in terms of benchmark would be the fastest actually for those 180 million rows but we want to show that that concept right so that, that's totally fine and it will be very fast so we could have done this all with with hyper actually as well but then we kind of lose the, yeah. the the point of using the right technology as well right yes, thank you. <laughs> cool. let's do yeah oh, yep. sorry yeah So custom SQL is never the, the best way to do, because custom SQL, um, to give you a background there, what it does in the back, back end is it's creating, it, it um, creates a subquery. So it brings in the whole table first, and then it creates a subquery of the fields I actually want to use for everything I, I use in Tableau. So that's never the, the, the best way to do. And always the native connectors there. Let's do one final one. We have a few minutes left, but we'll stick around for questions after the session as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 So definitely. Just to repeat the question, yeah. your organization doesn't work with those tiers, uh, but would it be possible for you to create those tiers by using Hyper? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Works in the same way, and um, the the aggregated fast hyper extract will be or smaller hyper extract will be very very quick, and will be able to to pass on the the queries and the filters to the next level, and then have a really responsive overall dashboard experience. Right. Yep. 
Good question. Great. Right. Thanks for your questions. Um, we, once again, we will stick around for some questions after the session. But first, we have some closing remarks for everyone here. Yeah, just to sum it up real quick. So not, don't leave just yet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, big data really needs to be for the people. You need to design it for the people to make it really valuable, to get to unlock the value out of it. And as you've seen today, Tableau really enables you to do that. Tableau works really great in that big data space. And uh, just remember the, the big data um, secret weapons here that you can leverage and uh, sh um, understand and uh, play with the agility as well, with the flexibility that you have and use the hot warm cold framework with prep if you don't have that tiered layer in your organization yet. Yeah, and create that hot warm cold layers or think at least about it and the technologies that you do have. If you have those technologies, that's great. If you don't, you can still recreate them. Once again, don't Think about the technology that we use, but just about how do I let pe end people consume this information. And of course, those secret weapons that we do offer in Tableau to help you leverage the right technology at the right time, which is then also our conclusion. Tableau is absolutely great for big data. The fact that we allow you to choose between live and extract connections is incredible. But the main point, of course, is keep your people in mind, your end users in mind, and use the right technology for the right use case. There are some other sessions um, about big data here at Tableau, but it is the final day, so we're putting them on the screen just so you know um, where you might, which recordings you might want to watch. Expedia had a great uh, uh, um, talk, and we have Robin Cottes doing advancing your big data strategy, talking about technologies and infrastructures at all of our customers. So if you want to get more insight, like that Netflix uh, slide, uh, look at that session when, uh, when the recordings are available. Um, this slide you might, might have seen already 1,500 times this week. Um, but we do actually read them. We feel beyond honored that they, we, uh, they allow us to talk to you guys. So please let us know what you felt. Um, if you thought it was great, also let us know. Uh, we want to be back next year. <laughs> if you thought we can improve, also let us know. We truly actually read every remark. Um, if you thought it wasn't that good, I hope you've already left the room, but that's fine. Um, no, we also, we also want to know, right? Please just let us know. That's, that's, that's our main message. Um, there's only this to say, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.